Hello and welcome. My name is Julie Boye, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to go from book idea to Amazon bestseller. So in the next 30 minutes, you'll learn how to take your book idea and create a book in as short a time period as you'd like, and then some strategies to make that book an Amazon bestseller. So before we go any further, I'd like to share with you my own book story. So the book that I've written is called 30 Days of Gratitude, the gratitude program that will change your life. And how this book came about is at the time I was actually running a few different programs around gratitude. I was working with my tribe and my team doing mentorship and teaching people about ways to be more grateful and teaching practical gratitude. And in my own life, I had been doing a gratitude practice at that time for about two years. Every night I had been writing down three things that I was grateful for. And um, what happened was, so I do have a daughter, she's seven at the time of this recording, and at that time I was pregnant with my second child. And I had an unexpected and traumatic miscarriage at 15 weeks gestation with my second pregnancy. And at the time, that was the worst day of my life. Um, I ended up having, you know, to have to go to the hospital in an ambulance, and it was a very traumatic experience. I had to have surgery, and all of this happened in the space of about four hours. We were home in time to pick up my daughter from daycare. And somehow that night, I found a way to write in my gratitude journal. And over the next two weeks, I realized that if I could find gratitude on what was then the worst day of my life, that I needed to actually share how to be more grateful with others. I need to share my system and my practical gratitude with others. So that's where the book came from. And really for me, the book ended up being my therapy and my way of working through the traumatic miscarriage. It really gave me something to focus on and something you know, to, to really brighten my spirit. So what happened was that was in February and I just had a book idea. I had written out some of the ideas of chapters. Some of it was based on some of the blog posts that I had written and some of the training that I had done. So I sort of had an outline of the book. And what I actually did was I contacted um, a self-publisher, Balboa Press. Now Balboa Press is the self-publishing arm of uh, Hay House, which you've probably heard of. And how it works with a self-publisher is you pay money for a different package, and I'll talk about this later on in the, in the webinar, and then they help you to get your book published. So um, what I did is I contacted them in February, and I said, got a book, 30 Days of Gratitude, the gratitude program that will change your life. I've got an outline written. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to get this book published. And they said, okay, great. Um, and I said, you know what, I'd really like to have a book out by May. And they said, you, you want the book out by, by May? And I said, yeah. And they said, okay, great. Well, do you have the manuscript? And I said, well, no, I'm still writing it, but I would really like to have it out by May of the same year. So I, you know, I didn't realize at the time that having a book idea to Amazon best-selling book in four months would be virtually impossible. So because I didn't know that it wasn't normal or possible, I just assumed that it could be done. So they wrote in my file, book launch in, in May. So I started writing the book, and over the next month, I wrote the book. Um, a lot of the book uh, was written sort of while I was at walking. I'm going to talk a little bit more about book process um, in the next couple of slides. But I wrote the book in about a month. And I'm very lucky. My sister is an editor. She's a high school English teacher. She's been, that's her career. And so she's an amazing editor. So she offered to edit the book at no extra cost. So as a gift to me, she offered to edit the book, which is amazing. And I will tell you that the editing process took almost as long as the writing process, but that it's something that's really, really important uh, in order to get your book, not just published, but you also want people to read your book and give it positive reviews and having an editor really helps. So uh, we edited for a month, and then I submitted my book at the beginning of April to Balboa Press for preparation for publishing. And they also, uh, the cover art was included. So 
they said to me when I submitted it at the beginning of April that, okay, well, it's going to take probably about six weeks. And I'm thinking, that's fine. Six weeks still gets me to, the, to where I need to be. So unbelievably, uh, two weeks later, the book was ready to go. They had already sent the cover art. This cover art you see here was the cover art that I, that I chose um, based on the design they gave me. All I did was change the colors. They actually sent me this design, and it was the perfect design right from the beginning, which is really great. So the book was ready in two weeks, which is not normal, not common. And so what I did is um, at the same time I was writing and editing the book, I was also doing the marketing of the book. I'm going to talk about more of the details later, but I was marketing towards a date. So I was marketing for May 31st. So once your book is ready, then it has to get posted uh, on all the different the websites, right? So it has to get on Amazon and Kindle and Kobo and Indigo and all those sites. And I also had physical books as well. This is a physically printed book. So then I, you know, I was working towards this May 31st launch date. Now, what's interesting is the book actually went live on Amazon a couple of weeks before that date. So a few people like saw it and bought it immediately. And I kind of had to tell people, listen, I really appreciate it if you would wait and purchase on May 31st because that's, that's the day of the book launch. And that's you know one of the strategies we'll talk about about getting to Amazon bestsellers. So that's what happened. I did a book launch, May 31st. The book became an Amazon bestseller in a number of different categories in Canada. It was pretty exciting. And that was five years ago. And today, I actually still get residual checks in the mail. Not a ton of money, but I do get residual checks in the mail from my publishing company from a book that I published, self-published five years ago. So that's my personal experience with this. I also have another book that became an Amazon bestseller, the 30 day whole body detox recipe and guidebook. And that was done a couple of years ago. So I've done this a few times. I've got some experience to share and I'm going to really walk you through the process in the next probably 20 minutes or so. Okay. So I want you to make sure you've got a notebook and that you're taking some notes during this time. And I want you to pause this webinar and write down your answers to these questions before you continue. So when you're writing your book story, I want you to ask yourself, why are you writing this book? So there could be lots of reasons why we're writing a book. Uh, we definitely could be writing a book for a marketing piece. So a lot of experts, if you have an expert type of business, you'll write a book as a marketing piece for your book and a way to put your information, your expertise into a written format. Uh, maybe you're telling your life story or somebody else's life story. You've got a, a, sto a burning story to tell, a really powerful story to tell, and you want to put that into a book to share your experience. Maybe you want to write somebody else's story or a collection of stories. Really be clear about why you're writing the book. If you're writing a book to make money, I would say that that is probably not the best intention behind a book. You really have to have, so for me, the reason I wrote a book about gratitude is because in that moment, when I went through the worst possible thing that had happened in my life at that point, I used my own gratitude process to help me get through it. So I knew that others could benefit from this gratitude practice. So that's why I wrote the book, first and foremost. So think about really truly why you're writing the book. Are you writing it maybe as a warning to other people? Don't do what I did. Or maybe you're writing it to share your success. Do what I did to be successful. But if your only focus for a book is to make more money, I would just invite you to really examine that and focus on what the real reason behind that is. Next is who is your audience? So who is the avatar? Who is the person that's going to buy this book? And it is so easy to say, well, everyone's going to buy my book. But just like a business, a book also needs an audience. You've got to think about who you're writing to. And something I learned from Tim Ferriss, uh, who's written, he wrote the very popular Four Hour Work Week, which is still a number one best selling book. And it was over a decade ago that it was first published. What he did for that book, which I thought was so intelligent, he wrote it for two people in his life. So there were two people in his life that were going through some challenges. One was deciding whether or not to scale their business, uh, and the other one, I think, was trying to start a business. So he wrote for those two friends and he wrote as if he was writing them an email to answer their questions about, should I scale my business? What should I do? And he really taught people how to have a lifestyle business. So when you're writing your book, who are you writing this for? So for me, a lot of what I was thinking about as my audience is I'm writing for, I've 
definitely was ready for entrepreneurs like myself, but I was also ready for people that had trouble sticking to gratitude habits. So I wanted to really step by step walk them through an action plan every single day. Then what are your goals? So do you want to have an Amazon best-selling book or is it just more important to get your book out there? Is it uh, a book uh, to use as part of a sales funnel? Is it a book to give to your family and friends? Is it uh, something uh, as a lead magnet? What is your goal for the book? It's really going to also uh, depend on your goals on how you decide to publish your book. And the last thing is, of course, finding the time to write. So this is, of course, the biggest challenge for most people is I don't have time to write a book. I promise you that you can find the time to write a book if it's important to you. And like me, you can write a book in 30 days. There are programs where you can go away for a weekend, for a three or four day weekend, and you can write your book in a weekend. There are lots of programs like that offered. That's not something that I wanted to do. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. It's just not my style to do it that way. I really got into the book. Um, I gave myself deadlines. I knew, so even before I started writing the full book, I had the deadline that I, I just had this date in my head that my book had to be launched by May 31st. So first, really set yourself a deadline, and then, then you want to start writing. Now, if you don't write at all right now, it's hard to just start writing a book. So if you're not doing any writing right now, if you're not blogging or journaling on a regular basis, choose one of those two activities to start writing today. A blog is a really good idea, especially if you're an expert and you want to share some of your expertise in a book, start by writing in a blog. Publish two or three times a week if you can, um, even if you're chunking the content and writing you know, a lot of it on the weekend and then you're publishing it throughout the week but get into that habit of writing on a regular basis because that is actually how you become a better writer is you actually start writing and rereading what you write is super powerful to realize how different writing is than speaking. So um, there's been times when I've written blogs by voice to text. I've spoken into my phone and written a blog and when I bring it into my blog, I realize that there's a lot of changes that have to be made because voice and the written word are not the same. So making that time to write, maybe it's just a challenge where you're writing two to 300 words a day, whatever that looks like for you, um, make sure you start putting that time in your calendar to write every single day because starting a book from zero with no experience writing is gonna make the process a lot more frustrating. So getting into the habit of writing really helps. Okay, so then we wanna talk about editing. So once you've actually written your book and put it together, the editing is so, so important. The reason is, is that once you print a book, now an ebook is different. If you're only publishing an ebook, you can update it. However, um, I think once someone has downloaded your Kindle edition, uh, that doesn't get updated necessarily with the one you update, but it's not permanent. Once you actually print a physical book, okay, this is the book, it's done. I'm not making edits or changes. This is it. This is the printed copy of the book, and the Kindle is the same as this. So the book is a reflection of you, and even if your own grammar is poor and your punctuation is not fantastic, this is why you want to work with an editor. The reason being, grammar and punctuation and sentence structure might not be important to you, but there's a good chance it's important to your reader. And maybe in your avatar, uh, you realize that grammar and punctuation isn't important to your customer, then that's fine. But the majority, if you want to be picked up by a publisher at some point, really having your book properly edited can make a massive, massive difference. So uh, if you can't afford an editor, find somebody who's willing to help you. Maybe um, you could hire a co-op student uh, that's doing, you know, in grade 12 English or that's, you know, in a first year English program, they need some co-op credits. Get creative around finding a way to edit it, but you, it's impossible to edit your own work. You can proofread and reread your own work, but editing is not, you can't edit your own stuff. So you need to find somebody or hire somebody to do the editing. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, if you are writing a book in English, find someone my recommendation is to find an editor who is in English is their first language, language, or they've studied 
editing in the language that you're looking at. So um, there's nothing wrong, like French is my second language, and I've studied French and I read in French, but I would never feel comfortable editing in my second language. I would stick to editing in my first language. There's obviously likely exceptions to this rule, but it's sort of a, if I was, you know, when I'm writing in French, I have people that speak French as their first language that edit for me in French. Because there is a difference between having it as your mother tongue in the language that you read and write in as opposed to just, you know, knowing that second language. So just something to keep in mind to, to you know, there are maybe ways you can outsource English uh, editing, but just be aware of, of someone's knowledge of the language before you outsource too much editing. Okay, so let's talk about publishing now. So there's many ways you can publish a book today, which is so exciting. Now, a traditional publisher, that, uh, of course, is a lot more challenging than the other ways, but I want to mention what I know of it. I have yet to work with a traditional publisher, so this is based on what I've learned from others, podcasts I've listened to, uh, books I've read, and other people's experiences with a traditional publisher that I know personally. I do have several friends who have had published books. So traditional publisher, you have to shop your book around. So usually you're working with a book agent and that agent will then shop your book to different publishers and they'll see if it's the right fit for their catalog. So if you're looking to work with a traditional publisher, make sure you find a publisher, look at the other books in their catalog and see if your book fits right in or maybe there's a niche that's missing in that publisher's catalog. Okay. So what happens when a publisher, they shop your book around and they give you a book advance. So they give you money based on how many copies of your book they think will sell. So uh, with an advance, you actually don't start making any money on your book until you've sold and reimbursed your advance. So that's something that I didn't really understand how that kind of worked. But usually with a traditional publisher, they give you some kind of money in advance. And once your book has sold, those that much money's worth of, of books, um, then you get a royalty. Well, hopefully you're getting a royalty uh, continually after that. That I would definitely ask for a royalty. Okay, so that's traditional publishing. Self publishing with a self publishing company is what I did. So I for one of my books, so the Thirty Days of Gratitude. So I worked with Balboa Press. As I said, they're the self publishing um, division of Hay House. There are some advantages if you'd like to become a Hay House author. They do give you opportunities a couple of times a year to enter different contests or get published in the catalog with different uh, endeavors. So that could be one way to get to work with a traditional publisher. I looked online, so even though I published my book five years ago, the same I used the basic package, the starter package. It was a thousand US then; it's a thousand ninety nine now. So the price hasn't really gone up. It had everything I needed. One thing that I love is that it had global distribution. So that was amazing, just having that ability that for my book to be available all over the world. Uh, they took care of that. So that was amazing. They did the listing, not just through Amazon or Kindle or Kobo. It was available in France. It was available in Australia through like the book depot that they have there. I don't even know how that works, but I know lots of people in Australia were able to get my book. So that was exciting, and it worked for me. I built a great relationship with Babo at the time and they really helped and supported me with my book. I know that other people have had different experiences, but I can only speak from my experience. And as I said, I still, even though I'm in Canada, so I'm in Canada, um, there is a withholding tax that happens because my book is, it's paid in us dollars. Um, and you know, that's, there's a withholding tax. So I do lose a little bit in that way. Um, I know there's, certain steps I could do to make that change. But uh, for now, it works just fine. And they signed me a US dollar check. Like I said, you know, every quarter, whenever I earn the minimum threshold amount. So that's pretty exciting. So that was a great experience. The challenge for a Canadian person can be that you buy your books in US dollars. And at the time when I did it, we were at par. Now we're not. So that might end up costing you more. One thing I would recommend if you were going to do this route is I would have invested, so $1,000 in the package, but I would have bought like $5,000 of books because it's way less expensive to buy a larger amount of books than it is to, and you get more percent off the retail price the more you buy. So I, I would have, I sold probably 1,500 to 2,000 copies of my book in five years 
I would have bought a thousand books right from the get go if I had really understood how many books that I could personally sell. So that's a learning that I would do differently because now I buy about a hundred books at a time because I don't, my book doesn't have the same momentum as it did at the beginning. And so I buy fewer books. So it costs me more for books. So I've had to raise the price of how much I sell the book from if I'm personally selling it directly. And it's still actually almost the same. It doesn't really cost more than if you went and bought it on Amazon. Okay. Self publishing, you are the publisher. So this would be if you did something like a Kindle ebook. So, I mean, Amazon is technically the publisher, but you do the work, you get the cover art, which you can, you know, you can hire someone on Fiverr or whatever to create that, or use Canva, C A N V A dot com. They actually, there's an ebook title that you can, a title page that you can download and it's the right size and you just make your own cover page. So that is another option today, and it doesn't cost you anything to list your book with Amazon, uh, with Kindle. It's super easy. So that I've actually done that. I just finished um, getting my the French translation of 30 Days of Gratitude ready as a Kindle book. So that's launching, um, well, at the time of this recording, it's launching in just a few days. So I'm really excited for that to finally be available in another language. And there are opportunities through Amazon as well to have a print on demand version of your book, which means that uh, they would actually print the book. So if someone wants a physical copy of your book, they it's printed one copy at a time. So you have to upload it again, not a huge deal, just a little bit more work. And, and you have to upload it properly. So there's like the right side and the left side of the pages and all that. But you can do that through Amazon. So there's probably other ways to do that, but the Amazon way, you are the publisher, it's really the easiest way to do it today. The last thing is printing. So printing, um, what that means is you work with a print house, so an actual printer, and you get them to print your book for you. So the 30 Day Whole Body Detox book that I have one version on Kindle, but the version um, for the seventh or sixth edition of the program, I actually printed four of the six editions with a printer. This is a full color cookbook, which is very expensive to print because it's full color, spiral bound. Uh, it has 120 pages. And I would get it printed in a bulk amount, so a larger number. So I would save money, obviously, on the cost of the book. They would print it. And so I did all the setup. I had the cover page made and all that, and they just print it. And then um, I distribute and sell the book myself. So if you're creating a book, for example, as a sell from the stage kind of book or as a promotional and marketing product, you could also do that. Uh, you can also pr pr print your book and distribute it through some online channels as well, through your website maybe. You could do, um, a lot of people will do, a sales funnel where you just uh, sell your book and they only pay for the shipping, so the book is free and they pay for shipping. So again, if you wanna use your book as a business card, if you're an expert, printing would be a great way to go about it. So print, again, more than a 1,000 copies. Don't worry, don't bother printing for under a 1,000. It's so, so expensive. If It's less expensive for a book that's not in color, though, than it is to do a color book. So that might be an option especially for Canadians that are selling mostly in Canada, or you're doing a lot of live events, I would definitely, definitely get my book printed. I would still register for an ISBN, ISBN number if I'm printing. Um, that I should mention, when you self-publish with Balboa, for example, they gave me, like they did the, the ISBN. I actually have like a some kind of certificate of authenticity for my book that came from the States from, and like Balboa did all that for me. So I don't know how that all happened. I can't tell you how to do it, but that was included in my book. So you do want to get an ISBN, which is like the book number. You also get that when you make a Kindle book, you get a number, an ISBN number for your Kindle book. So just something to think about. I put the link here for Babola Press because I often get asked um, about that experience. Okay. So now we have to think about your brand and the book and how that all fits together because often today we're making a book to go with our brand. So how does the book fit into your brand? Is it your business card? Are you leading with the book? Are you a speaker, a blogger, an entrepreneur? Where does that fit in? So what's interesting is the book was written before I actually got to my brand. So my brand, Wake Up With Gratitude, 
has actually grown and evolved since the book was written. So the book was sort of the starting point for me, and then I grew into the brand Wake Up With Gratitude. So even if you don't have your brand completely distilled at this time, if you are doing an expertise type of book, start with the book and then see how your brand evolves from that book. Really be cautious to make your brand a true sales piece because then it's not going, you want people to recommend your book. You want people to give you a five-star review for your book, uh, tell their friends about it. So if your book is really just a sales pitch, then no one's going to find that of value unless they're specifically looking for a specific, you know, unless you tell them like, this is how you, you know, the steps to buying, whatever, like that would make sense. But in general, a book, People want to get value out of the book without feeling like they're being sold to. So really being clear about how your brand and your book will fit together, even if you've not built your brand yet. So social media. Yes, this is definitely, as an author, social media is definitely your friend and you're going to have to get comfortable using social media to share your book and your brand and your message. So what social media is, it's a vehicle to share your book. Okay, so um, you can use the vehicle however you like, but know that without the vehicle, it is a lot harder to sell the book. As a speaker, for example, to get more speaking gigs, you want to be visible on social media, and then of course, then you sell your book when you do the speaking gigs. I want to mention something that, an er kind of an error that I made at the beginning. So when I first had the book, I started a book page, which is 30 Days of Gratitude book on Facebook. And then I had a Julie Boyer page as well. And now I have Wake Up With Gratitude. So what happened was the book page, I started growing that and then realized very quickly that my brand isn't 30 Days of Gratitude. I still haven't figured out my brand name. So what I did is I, I made Julie Boyer sort of the author page. So that's where you find all things gratitude is Julie Boyer. And as I grew Julie Boyer, I went through several iterations of brands and came to Wake Up With Gratitude. So the time of this recording, my brand is Wake Up With Gratitude. I, my plan is to keep that brand. It actually feels like it's exactly where I'm meant to be and I've landed in the right place. But if you've known me for a while and you're watching this, you know that my brand has changed many, many times uh, since I, the book actually came out. So choose a Facebook page. Don't make a separate page for your book. I don't recommend it. Maybe make a book club page if you'd like, if your book lends itself to be read in a book club environment. When you're using, so today, Facebook is still fantastic. There are still lots of ways to grow on Facebook. You can choose whether to grow on your personal page and share your book, depending on what you're selling, or through your business page. The Facebook still really loves Facebook Live videos. They love for you to, to, to post stuff that doesn't have links. This can all change by the time you watch this video, even a week from after I recorded this. But um, getting other people to talk about your book, getting book ambassadors, really important helping you to promote your book. I talk, I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. These are the ones that I focus on, uh, are Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, a little bit on Twitter, but no, I don't really spend a lot of time on Twitter anymore. It's really changed. It's more of um, a feed-based information as opposed to, um, I'm sure there are people that do Twitter really well, but I am not one of them, so I'm not gonna comment too much about it. You've gotta get on social media. If you're blogging, you gotta share it through social media channels. Absolutely, that's the only way to get attention to what you have to share. Okay, so this is hilarious. I just fixed this slide before we started and somehow wrote momentum with a Y. So <laughs> see, editing gets you every time. So we're just gonna laugh that momentum is written with a Y. So I'm gonna talk a little bit now about the marketing and preparing for your book launch. So you've got your book, you've got your brand, you've got your platform, your Facebook pages are all established. So how do we build momentum and create excitement for our brand? So one of the things that I did was that as I was writing the book, because I already gave myself a deadline, I started promoting book launch May 31st, uh, within weeks of starting to write my book. I'm writing a book, it's coming out on May 31st. Now, that is really scary because I didn't know that it would all work out, but I was just, I just did it anyway. Like, what's the, the, what's the worst that can happen? You missed the book launch date. Oh, well. 
but it provides that that initiative and that momentum to get things going. Uh, I had so instead of business cards when I went to events and I did a lot of networking events and met people, even just meeting people. Like I remember actually giving one of these cards to a friend one of my daughter's friend's parents in the parking lot of the school because I was like, my book's coming out next week, here's the card. On the card, I had a, a special link that took people right to, it was on my webpage, where they could buy the book from Amazon. So I had the Amazon link because I was going for Amazon bestseller. Now, uh, I gave credit for people wherever they bought the book. So I, what I did is on the day of the launch, I had draws every hour and I was doing them on Facebook. I recruited uh, people in my network to offer freebies for promotion on Facebook. So for the hour that we were going to give their gift away, I was promoting it on Facebook. Uh, and then I would draw the hour based on, I didn't even have a sales funnel back then. It was I didn't even know that existed. I had an email set up that was for the book launch. And I said, when you get your receipt, just email me your receipt. And then all I did was, um, it was a random number generator based on when the emails came in. So if your email came in third and I got, I chose three from the random number generator, then you would win the prize for that hour. And I did that, I think for 12 hours. So I had 12 different gifts every hour for all of May 31st. So people sent me their receipts. Now I wanted, of course, everyone to choose Amazon. Um, and it was amazon.ca. The majority of my network is in Canada. so. Uh, I knew that it would be a .ca book as opposed to a .com. We, we weren't really high in .com, but we never got to number one. And and it really worked, and it was cool because all day long I was sharing the screenshots of where the book was. I mean, it was just so exciting. We really built that momentum and exciting, excitement, but I built it for months ahead of time. What I would have done, which would have been a little bit smarter, was I would have started building my email list earlier and said, you know, I'll email you when the book comes out, it's coming out May 31st and you can purchase your copy May 31st. That's what I would do. As soon as you know your book launch date, start getting people on your email list. Have the card, give them a card, but that's, you're hoping they're gonna take action, you're hoping they're going to remember. So by having an email list, I at least have a way to contact you about that. And it really is about the timing and the build up and the excitement. And now they give you the bestseller badge. So when I did it, they didn't have the bestseller badge. So my book does not have a bestseller badge. It's a bit unfortunate. Um, but my 30 day whole body detox book does have the bestseller badge because it, uh, at that time they, they started giving away the badge. So when you go look at my book, it says Amazon bestseller 30 day whole body detox, whereas the 30 days of gratitude does not have the badge. So, Bit sad about that, but you can't go in the past. And you know, I know that we did it on that day. I kept all the screenshots. I'm so proud to see my book. Um, it also went to the top in Kindle as well. And I didn't do it as a free Kindle. Now there is a strategy to selling your book for free and getting people to download it on Kindle for free. And that's a strategy and that gets you the bestseller badge and you're welcome to do that. But that also doesn't generate any revenue for you at all. So there's a bit of a you know catch 22 what's most important at that time. Um, so yeah, those are all things that I did. Okay. So now that I've shared with you all of my tips on becoming an Amazon bestseller and writing your book, I am inviting you to take action. So do something after you've watched this webinar, go back to your notes. When are you starting? When are you publishing this? Please connect with me on social. If we're not, not already connected, you'll find me most on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, my blog can be found at wakeupwithgratitude.com, which does go to my julieboy.com site. So I've really built my whole business on julieboy.com. Um, there's a strategy behind that. My name will stay the same, but if my brand changes in the future, I can continue to, to redirect and work with um, julieboy.com. So that's you know a little bit of the reasoning behind that. If you would like a private consultation, you are maybe stuck in the book process, you don't really know where to go, you need someone to talk through, about what to do with your book and your book idea, just visit julieboy.com slash VIP and just fill out the application for a VIP time. So um, we can, I always offer a little 15 minute phone call at no charge and then we can decide you know, where to go next and how I can best be of service. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that this webinar has helped you and I can't wait to meet you on social and looking forward to uh, learning all about your book.